Ryobi continues to release more and more products. Today, it's the three inch detail polisher. We'll check it out when we get back. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. This is the Ryobi One Plus 18 volt PBF 102. And it's basically an 18 volt polisher. Detail polisher is what they're calling it. Uh, runs a three inch pad as well as a two inch pad for sanding. So various things you can do with it. Let's dive in, actually see what it's like. And don't mistake this for the actual right angle die grinder. Much different tool. In fact, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Then we'll come back, we'll wrap it up with pricing, warranty, and our final thoughts. This is another brand new tool from Ryobi and it's part of their one plus 18 volt platform. Uh, however, it is not a brushless tool. It's not an HP tool. This is just a Ryobi one plus 18 volt brushed motor. Uh, comes as a bare tool with all the accessories you see here, but it is a detail polisher sander. So basically a small uh, sander and polisher uh, made for two inch and three inch accessories. As you see here, um, you get two speeds. So right here on the top. And by the way, don't mix this up with the right angle die grinder, which is a lot faster tool. It is part of their HP. So it's not the same as the HP die grinder. However, there is some crossover here as to the jobs they'll do. But again, don't mistake one for the other, much different tools. Uh, you get a trigger here and uh, you do get variable speed. So in speed one, you're gonna get zero to 2,800 RPM. So with the trigger, obviously you get that variable speed capability to vary that speed from zero to 2,800. And then in speed two, you're gonna get zero to 7,800 RPM. So it's gonna be a lot faster in speed two. You're gonna do a lot more polishing in that higher speed uh, versus the sanding. Now right here below the head, this does not reverse uh, the, uh, the direction. This is just a trigger lock and it just locks it out from being used. I do wish that the trigger lock would work for actually locking the trigger on. However, it does not work that way. It just locks the trigger out from actually uh, powering the tool. Uh, but this is something that you may end up polishing for minutes at a time. So it'd be nice to be able to lock that trigger on versus just locking it off. You also have right here on the top of the tool, which is a spindle lock. And what that's gonna aid you in doing is actually installing and removing uh, the accessory. So like I've got a two inch cup wheel here, and this is gonna allow you to put different accessories on. And so rather than using a tool, I can use this spindle lock and turn it till it actually engages. And then I can spin this on. I can spin the tool on here, tighten it up, and then let that spindle lock go. So again, no tools needed to put those on. Again, something to be aware of, something like the die grinder uses a quarter inch uh, smooth style shaft that actually goes in and tightens up with this collet on the actual polisher detail or the detail polisher, it's going to use a 5 16 by 24 threads per inch uh, stub out here that's actually going to shaft that's going to screw in. So you see here, we've got a, a threaded shaft here as well as a threaded shaft on the three inch polishing backing plate as well. That's gonna allow you to spin these on and tighten them up so that they lock on there. So that is a threaded design versus a collet design. So when you buy your accessories, make sure you get the correct accessory to be able to run on this. Now also on the tool is a little LED light here on the bottom, which by the way, reacts quite a bit differently than most of the other tools, even Ryobi tools. So you'll see when I pull the trigger, let me unlock it here, the light comes on, but it goes right off as soon as I let go of the trigger versus like the die grinder here, which is like most of their drills, impact drivers, things like that. Once I let go of the trigger, that light stays on for five, 10 seconds after I pull the trigger. Not the case here on the detail polisher sander. I thought about that and I thought, well, that's kind of crazy. But then again, typically uh, you're not needing to shine the light on the area that you're not polishing or once you get done, then you're done. But at the same time, I would think it would react a lot like the die grinder. So. Just something to note, something I thought was interesting of that light going right out because usually we see it where that light stays on again for five or 10 seconds after the trigger is pulled. On the auxiliary handle here, we can remove that, put it on the left-hand side if you want to, so it's right or left-handed. 
uh, to make it easy for however you're going to polish or whatever you're going to sand. Now on this three inch backing plate here, it makes it really easy for, uh, again, for the polishing uh, because we can stick on with the hook and loop, uh, we can stick on the wool pad for doing our compounding, and then we can move to our stiffer uh, yellow pad for doing some polishing, and then on down to a lot softer uh, gray pad, which is gonna do your finish out polishing or even waxing if you want to. Now taking the backing plate off and going to the two inch cup, Now we can put on our sanding disc, which by the way, it comes with a 60 grit, 80 grit, and 120 grit uh, sanding pad there that fits on that two inch cup. Uh, I don't believe it's recommended for sanding with the three inch. You could try it, but it may not have the power to do it, but we'll find that out here in a moment. Uh, and also with runtime, we'll find that out here in a moment as well. Now they, are, they do claim an hour runtime on a nine amp hour battery. I think a nine amp hour is pretty overkill for a tool like this because it's such a handy little tool it makes it kind of unhandy if you will if you put a nine amp hour battery on it let's get a weight on this with this two amp hour just to get an idea and i'm going to leave the handle on it and leave the backing plate on there so with the two amp hour battery you're looking at three pounds three ounces or three pounds two and a half ounces uh, and with the four amp hour battery Probably gonna be close to four pounds, three pounds, 13 and a half ounces. So three and three quarter pounds uh, with the four amp hour battery. I would say there were, those would probably be the most used batteries there. Um, I'm gonna try it with the two amp hour first, just because it's a lighter and handier tool with this. And then we'll put the four amp hour on and, and see what kind of runtime we get out of that. Now size wise with this tool, uh, with a two amp hour battery on there, you're just uh, right almost nine inches, so a little short of nine inches here uh, to the top of the tool. And then as far as lengthwise with the, uh, the two inch sandy cup on there, uh, about six and a half inches, a little less than six and a half inches. Um, as far as the, you know, across the tool, of course that handle is gonna throw things off, but the body of the tool, you're right at a little less than two and a half inches, so 2.35 inches across the back of the tool. And as I mentioned, this is a brushed motor. So you'll see in here little some sparks and you see the can motor actually in there through the vent. That's not a bad thing necessarily. A lot of times tools don't need a brushless motor. Obviously it would be more efficient if so, but probably more expensive as well. Let's go use this and uh, we'll see what we think. Something else to mention, other than sanding, one thing I really like to use these types of tool for is like a bristle brush. Uh, so that's a, a 3M product that works really, really well for removing gaskets and cleaning up areas. And you can get those in, in green, uh, red, as well as yellow, depending on how soft you want it and how aggressive you want it. And then even scotch Brights pads for, for doing the same thing, uh, whether you're taking things off of aluminum, off of stainless steel, what have you. You can do a lot of different things with different series of scotch Brite pads. Okay, no real surprise here. We're going to try out the, uh, the new PBF 102 a detail polisher uh, by polishing out some headlights, something very common we see on cars today because most of them have plastic headlights now and after the UV, the sun has hit them for several years. They like to get good and foggy and you can put sprays on them that'll make that last longer. You can put sprays on it that uh, kind of melt this away. But the bottom line is if you don't take care of this correctly, it's gonna keep coming back. Um, and quite frankly, it's just gonna keep coming back, period but we wanted to see how easily can this tackle the job. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna do this the right way. Uh, we're gonna start with 800 grit sandpaper, and then we're gonna go to 1,000, then to 2,000, to 3,000, and to 5,000. Now we could probably stop at three and go to a polish, but the 5,000 is just gonna take it that much closer uh, to where we can hit it with a polish and, and knock that down. So we're gonna use the Ryobi for all of that, now, one thing that you definitely want when you're doing fine sanding like this, especially on something with a contour, uh, and really I recommend on anything when you're getting over 600 grit, you want an interface pad. And that's just basically a pad that's nice and soft, has hook and loop on both sides, and it's gonna allow that pad to ride correctly on that surface and not have just a rigid edge that's, uh, that's digging in or riding off of the actual surface itself. So this will allow us to then you know, get on those curved surfaces, which this whole surface is curved, 
and keep that sanding properly to not have any high spots, low spots, and so forth. Now we're gonna use a little bit of uh, water with a drop or two of Dawn dish detergent in it. Basically, that's just a, a surfactant that breaks the water tension. Um, so we'll keep that uh, just kind of damp as we are sanding. You don't, want, you don't have to flush it with water, if you will, but you do want to keep it wet because that'll keep the pores of the sandpaper nice and clean, and you don't have to worry about it uh, you know, clogging up, the, clogging up the sandpaper. Now with this fine sanding, I'm going to be in speed two, so up to 70, 7,800 RPMs. Uh, with a lower grit sandpaper, you could drop down to speed one, uh, but I'm more or less polishing with this higher grit stuff, so I'm going to stay up there in that higher range. Now I'm using about half throttle right now and just kind of feeling it out as I go. And by the way, you see that uh, little bit of residual there. That's what you need to watch to make sure that you're not uh, getting that dry and uh, you could be clogging it up with uh, things coming off that headlight. So you want to keep it nice and damp, but again, you don't have to keep it flush, if you will. And if your headlight's bad enough, you may need to start with 400 to do this. I've seen them where I've done actual these with 400 before. Looks like 800's cleaning them up pretty good. I'm not looking for perfection, but I do want a nice polish on it when I get it done. Uh, and it looks like 800's cleaning up pretty well. I'm gonna make one more pass with the 800 grit. And just so you know here, so if you're not getting something out with 800, you're not going to be able to get it out with 1,000. So this is where you want to make sure you get all your imperfections out. So I know I've got a spot here. I've got several other spots, but you may be able to see this one. I'm not concerned about it, but I know if I wanted that out of there, I'd probably have to back up to four or 600 to get that spot out. I would waste my time trying to do it on my next step. So whatever you want as far as imperfections out, of the headlight, you wanna make sure that you do it now with your first step, and you may need to back up. And by the way, I backed down to speed one, which seems to be plenty quick enough to be able to do this polishing. Really sanding, but since we're so fine, we're really doing a polish. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to a thousand grit here.
and the 5,000 grit. Okay, so we've got the 5,000 grit done. Now I'm gonna step up or step down to a polishing pad. I can remove my interface pad. I don't need that. And I'm gonna go straight to my yellow pad, which is a little more dense uh, than this gray pad is. And gonna give me a little bit more cutting power. I'm just gonna go to a polish. If I have to, I'll step up or step down, step up to a compound that is a heavier cut. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with the polish to see if I can't get this polished out with just a polish that's not so aggressive, but again, I am gonna use the firmer pad. And again, I'm only in speed one. Okay, it's definitely polishing out. Now there's some swirls and scratches that I can see in here, but I know there were a lot there from a polish before that as well. So I'm really not being that critical about it. I could have stayed on the sanding process and get, that, get all, all that polished out or sanded out. Uh, but this is actually cleaning up quite nicely. I'm gonna hit it one more time with the polish and just stop at that rather than going to a compound. All right, we didn't do a perfect job on our headlights. That's probably the fifth time those headlights have been polished uh, and that vehicle is more than 10 years old. Not saying it's not still a decent vehicle, but just saying we weren't trying to reach perfection on those headlights, but the tool did rather well. Now, let me give you a little advice, maybe even a little warning. If you're wanting to polish headlights, this is a rotary tool, not an orbital tool. This is gonna be much more aggressive when it comes to sanding and polishing than an orbital tool that actually makes little orbits. So we actually nicked the paint on a couple of areas because I was trying to kind of rush the process and I nicked it a little bit even though I had some tape on it. So it is gonna be much more aggressive than an orbital tool. So be careful with that. Also, if you're trying to reach perfection and haven't done this before, you're probably going to have swirls remaining until you really understand how to use this tool. But that's not the tool's fault, that's user error. As far as the detail polisher sander, I think it did rather well. And with the two amp hour battery, we did the complete headlight. I didn't think we would get through all those five stages of five, let's see, 800, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, yeah, 5,000. So uh, six stages because we polished as well and did several stages of polishing with the two amp hour battery. Now that was only one headlight, so you probably won't get two headlights out of this. In fact, I could hear it kind of slowing down there at the end, so I'm sure this battery is about depleted, but still we got a good 15 minutes of runtime out of that two amp hour battery. So I'm sure with a four amp hour battery, you could do that complete pair of headlights with no problem. It's pretty cool that it comes with a wool pad, two, uh, two foam pads as well, and a few sanding discs. You can buy different kits uh, online and easily get the different accessories that you want. I would recommend, uh, if you're going to do headlights, the, the kit that I bought, I'll put a link in there, that came with all these different stages of, of sanding pads. And as I mentioned, very important that you use an intermediate pad in there when you're sanding, that when you're doing that fine sanding and that higher grit. Hey, check it out for yourself. It will release in August 2021. You'll see it show up at Home Depot. Also, you can find it at homedepot.com. It's the PBF 102, and it's the two-speed detail polisher from Ryobi. 
$129 for the bear tool and a three year warranty. Hey, would you mind keeping track of us on Instagram, on Facebook, and even Twitter? And would you hit that like and subscribe button, but only if you liked our video. Hey, if you hated our video, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.